Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another book related video. Okay. Now what we're going to do in this video is read excerpts of Wilhelm Reich's Mass Psychology of Fascism. Okay. And this is a book that Wilhelm Reich, originally the first edition, he put out in the 1930s um, during the rise of fascism in Europe. And it was sort of, sort of a historical account, sort of an analysis of what was going on in terms of the economics of the situation, in terms of the politics of the situation, and how he understood the powers that we be were uh, sort of controlling the psyche of the, of the society so they could obtain more power and basically give rise sort of a historical account of how fascism came to be in Europe and why certain segment of society chose these leaders to lead them down that road, that path, okay? And uh, Wilhelm Reich is a, is a unique, unique character, okay? He is the only person that I know of that both Nazi Germany and the United States government burned his books, okay? Which is one of the reasons that he hit my radar and I started reading about it. And this book, uh, The Mass Psychology of Fascism, and Wilhelm Reich's, you know, sort of a, has a huge library related to the human psyche and how the sexual, uh, sexuality plays a role, major role in how our society is formed. And this book has a lot to say about that. Okay. Now I haven't finished this book yet. I'm up to here. Okay. There is a preface to this, which starts on page 11 and goes to page 26 for the, or 27 for the preface. Okay. And then there's a little segment that's got a glossary of terms and as far as the text of the the reading of the text um 125 pages into the book i'm about you know a third of the way into the book and it is a heavy read and i'm taking my own sweet time with it so i thought we'd read some excerpts from this book and i've highlighted the living daylights out of this book you know taking notes and underlying stuff and highlight a specific paragraphs okay so how we're going to decide what to read what which, which excerpts to read from this book is basically we're also live streaming this recording on twitch as well so what we've decided to do is basically chat the people who are watching this live are going to decide which pages we're going to read either from the prefix which is from page 11 to 27 or from the main body of the book which is you know i'm 125 pages deep so we can go from page it starts on page three i believe so page three all the way up to 127 125 is game okay and as soon as you know they mention a page what we're going to do is we're going to flip to that page and read anything that i might have highlight it and i've basically highlighted uh in most of the pages here there are certain pages for example this page there is no highlight so we'll read if we hit a page where i have nothing highlighted or starred or anything like this we'll flip to the next page or the previous page and read an excerpt from that okay and um, that's the way we're going to approach it and hopefully we'll get some good readings going on. I've already shared about three quotes, uh, three segments from what I've read as I've been reading it on our Discord page and on Twitter and Gab and Minds. I've linked up those uh, segments. And again, um, this is the third edition of the Mass Psychology of Fascism that I have. It came out in 1970. and. He originally, Wilhelm Reich originally wrote this book in the 1930s and he did a serious revamp to it in 1945, I believe, after everything had played out 
with the rise of the Third Reich and fascism taking over in Italy and Spain and stuff like this. Okay, um, so that's our little intro to this. I hope you enjoy. And uh, what we'll do, we're going to go to chat. I'm going to get caught up with some of the comments, but what we might do is we're definitely going to read whatever pages that people have recommended. And there's a couple of pages that people have already mentioned, which is basically reading page 47 from this book and from pre from the prefix reading page 16. Okay, so those are the first two pages we're going to flip to. And the odds are there are certain words here that we're going to have to look up. And there's a glossary here. Let me read you the glossary uh, just in case they come up. So we know what the words are that he's has a definition for right we're not going to read the whole glossary i'm just going to read you the names and there's a couple of names here that are a couple of words phrases that he's using that are pretty important one of them is sex economy okay so the glossary where he's defined certain terminology are the following in the glossary he has bions biopathy character analysis character structure or orgasm anxiety orgasmic impotence okay uh, organ energy uh, organomic ener energetic uh, functionalism sex economy sex pull vigo, vigo vegetal therapy and work democracy okay those are the words that he decided to define okay and sex economy is pretty important so let's read sex economy because sex economy is going to appear a lot okay so the definition of sex economy quote the term refers to the manner of regulation of biological energy or what is the same thing of the economy of the sexual energies of the individual sex economy means the manner in which an individual handles his biological energy how much of it he dams up and how much of it he discharges orgastically the factors that influence this manner of regulation are of sociological psychological and biological nature the science of sex economy consists of of that body of knowledge that was delivered from a uh, derived from a study of these factors this term was applicable to Reich's work from the time of his refutation of Freud, Freud's cultural philosophy to the discovery of the organ when it was superseded by organomy the science of the life energy okay <laughs> Chicho glad to catch you da, 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 da. I'm grabbing my dictionary uh, seriously grab your dictionary this is I've highlighted some um, some words here that I've had to look up sometimes I'm reading this at home so I look up the words sometimes I'm reading this at the park or at the beach or during transit where I don't have access to the internet and I'm so called things and I put a little question mark near words and stuff like this so I'll look them up later and sometimes I have the chance sometimes I don't okay thank you for the uh, twitch prime subscribe uh, uh, crypto krypton core okay I'm <laughs> have you multiple diction multiple dictionaries or online right so we already had a couple of pages pick to read quotes from or segments from right first was page 67 I believe hello I always watch your long videos with open discussion and this I uh, and this I the first time I've been able to catch you live glad to have you here thank you for the subscribe and the follow love your videos up oh, amazing pleasure to create these brother or sister of course right okay so let me see what page it was it was 46 I believe and then we had 69 so 46 47 let me write these down so I don't have to scroll back up so page 47 and the prefix page 16 and then we had page 69 right 47 prefix 16 and then we had page 69 
<laughs> Who was it with page 69? So let's go to page 47 and read an excerpt from that. And then please feel free to, you know, discuss it among yourselves, those of you watching live. And uh, sometimes I have to take a double take and reread these things. And I've had to reread these things. If I remember what I've highlighted, what it's referring to from previous pages, I might give a little intro to it. Okay. Uh, military soldiers. And I'll read you the, I give my own little tag phrases. I write them at the top of the book, inside the pages or below or whatever, wherever I have space. So when I'm flipping through this thing, if I want to read something regarding, uh, you know, for example, in here on page 42, I have fascism was a middle class, um, was a middle class movement, right? And sort of trying to understand what how fascism came to be and why it was right and where the movement and originally you know where the support was coming from and whatnot so for page 47 okay in the top basically my tag two words are this military uh, and soldier okay uh, Um, so let me read you because sometimes I just highlight a word right all these sex words may have not you towards that number 69 so let me read you this sentence here and we're gonna read the previous paragraph and I'm gonna read you this line here and if it needs be we're gonna read a little bit further as well okay quote from page 47 of Wilhelm Reich's Mass Psychology of Fascism. Okay. The ar arch personification of this type in the psychology of the masses is to be found in the army sergeant. Butlers, valets, and other such employees of aristocratic families are a flagrant example of the power of this identification by adapting the attitudes, way of thinking, and demeanor, demeanor, uh, demeanor of the ruling class, they undergo a complete change and, in an effort to minimize their lonely origin, often appear as character, caricatures of the people whom they serve. This identification with authority, firm, state, nation, etc., which can be formulated, I am the state, the authority, the firm, the nation, constitute, constitutes a psychic reality and is one of the best illustrations of an ideology that has become a material force. At first, it is only the idea of being like one's superior that stirs the mind of the employee or the of official, but gradually owning to his pressing material dependence his whole pers person is refashioned in the line with the ruling class, always ready to accommodate himself to authority. The lower class man develops a cleavage between his economic situation and his ideology. He lives in materially restricted circumstances, but assumes gentle, gentlemanly postures on the surface, often to a ridiculous degree he eats poorly and insufficiently but attaches great importance to a decent suit of clothes a silk hat and dress coat become the material symbol of his caricature character structure and nothing is more suited for a first impression appraisal of the mass psychology of a people than his dress it is its accom accommodating attitude that specifically distinguishes the structure of the lower middle class man with the structure of the industrial worker okay and he's got a little footnote here and the footnotes have been reading and the footnotes I found to be pretty important okay and the footnote he has here industrial worker and he's got a footnote for where he's referencing to the footnote so the footnote in regards to industrial worker this applies only to Europe they adopt, 
adaptation of the lower middle class habits by the industrial worker in America obliterates the boundary between the two. Okay, so there is a distinction back then between the middle class and the, the lower middle class and the hierarchy that was established in Europe and the Americas, the United States specifically. Okay, so what he's saying here wasn't really dominant in the United States, it was really dominant in Europe. Okay, just to give you a reference to this, I'm going to read this little segment on the previous page as well page 46 hopefully it's, it's going to give us a little bit of more intro to this and this chapter is the authoritarian ideology okay this chapter doo -doo 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 it is chapter uh, is chapter two and the title of the chapter is this the authoritarian ideology of the family and the mass, mass psychology of fascism and one of the things that Reich if you want to put this into context what he's referring to here he was looking at how fascism came to be and where its root was and he's going into the specifics of fascism had its beginnings really its strongest support through the middle class where the middle class was trying to associate itself with the uh, the aristocrats, the extremely wealthy, and they were separating themselves from the working class. And the way they were doing it, they were separating themselves with the working class, not in terms of economics, because economically, the middle class was in the same position as the working class, the laborer, right? Because they weren't better off economically uh, uh, than the laborer, but in terms of morality they would associate themselves with the ruling class right and that's where he's really this paragraph this segment is focused on okay uh, let me see if this uh, little segment that I've underlined uh, fits into this thing the answer to this is supplied by the social position of the lower middle class yeah let me read you this as well okay uh, the answer to this is supplied by the social position uh, of the lower and middle class public. Let me read this uh, to you when the recycling people have already moved away. The re it's recycling day today, so you're gonna hear glasses being put away and stuff. I'm just gonna read a couple of comments from chat. I don't feel as safe anymore. I understand what he was trying to convey to the reader. Good very interesting excerpt well worded extremely well worded really this book i wasn't sure what i was up for reading uh there's one person here one mod that we have indexed that he's read a fair bit of wilhelm reich and um it is a heavy read and i've read some of wilhelm reich stuff i've never read a book from front to cover i've read excerpts and sections and brilliant brilliant read okay metaphor is strong in illustrating his message the United States is becoming a fascist state isn't it if it's already there Odmik, what he's explaining here is what we're seeing unfold in the United States right now okay that's the feel I'm getting from this okay that is one of the reasons I decided to read this because I really wanted to get a feel for how it is where this movement we're in this place right now in the Western world okay so let me read you this little section as well that I've highlighted and starred which is on page 46 okay the answer of this is supplied by the social position of the lower and middle class public and private officials the economic position of the average official is worse than that of the average skilled industrial worker this poorer position is partially compensated by the meager prospect of a career and in the case of the government official by a love lifelong pension okay and in this book Wilhelm Reich really emphasizes the bureaucrat as well from what I've read so far that the bureaucrats were one of the driving forces for fascism okay 
And even though their financial position was, as he says, was poorer than you know the industrial worker, they had a moral uh, sort of a more uh, moral belief embedded on them by the ruling class that they were better than the industrial worker and they had to do the will of the ruling class to show their uh, loyalty right nice pick uh, martin i believe you picked it the next little segment we wanted to read was prefix page 16 so let me go to the prefix page 16 there we go page 16 oh my how to kill fascism check this out that's my little tag phrase that i have here okay how to kill fascism and and i got a little thing highlighted here underlined that i wrote myself saying question okay so let's read this we're going to read this whole page i basically highlighted the whole page so let's read this and i'm not sure who requested this uh, but nice coincidence going from page 47 to this one okay let's read this okay and this is the preface it's basically preface to the third edition and this one came out in 19 this edition came out in 1970 okay Quote, fascism can be crushed only if it is countered objectively and practically with a well-grounded knowledge of life, life's processes. In political maneuver, acts of diplomacy and making a show, it is without peer. But it has no answer to the practical question of life for it sees everything merely in the spectrum of ideology or in the shape of the national uniform. With a fascist character, regardless of hue, is heard uh, sermonize, sermonize, sermonizing about the honor of the nation instead of talking about the honor of the man or the salvation of the sacred family and the race instead of the community of toiling mankind. When he is seen puffing himself up and has his chops full of slogans, let him be asked quietly and simply in public. And he's putting this in quotes himself, the next paragraph that I'm about to read you, right? What are you doing in a practical way to feed the nation without murdering other nations? What are you doing in a uh, physician to calm? What are you doing as a physician to combat chronic diseases what as an educator to intensify the child's joy of living what as an economist to erase poverty what as a social worker to alleviate the weariness of mothers having too many children what as an architect to promote hygienic conditions in living quarters let's have no more of your chatter give us a straightforward concrete answer or shut up right and we're ending the quote that he's quoting right now right so he's basically saying how to kill fascism is to forget about the rhetoric rhetoric they're saying attack them with questions that are relevant to society right and those are the questions that he was saying that we should be asking fascism and then he continues on and i'm ending his quotes right now but quote from the book it follows from this international fascism it follows from this that international fascism will never be overcome by political maneuver it will fall victim to the natural organization of work love and knowledge of an international scale in our society love and knowledge still do not have the power at their disposal to regulate human existence in fact these great forces of the positive principle of life are not con conscious of their of their enorm enormity their indispensability their overwhelming importance for social existence it is for this reason that human society today one year after the military victory over party fascism 
still finds itself on the brink of the abyss. The fall of our civilization is inevitable if those who work, the natural scientists of all living, not dead, branches of knowledge, and the givers and receivers of natural love should not become conscious of their enormous responsibility quickly enough. Okay. That's the prefix, page 16. The first question you read, chillingly relevant in the quote. Yeah, very much so. And the first question is this, where Wilhelm Reich was mentioning. What are you, what are you, what are you doing in a practical way to feed the nation without murdering other nations? Brilliant, right? What are they doing? without murdering other nations, right? Non-interventionalism, this is what it's all about, in my opinion. Okay, nice pick, nice page to read. The next page, page 69, okay, from the main body of the text. So let's go to page 69. Maybe we'll have some sex economy in there. It's almost like a for, for, fortune teller book, a prophecy. It's insane. It's, it's giving me, personally, it's giving me a very unique and a, a very scientific analytical look into what's going on in our present society in regards to the rise of certain movements okay uh, interesting 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 okay let's read from page 69 and i have some stuff highlighted here i don't have any tag phrases put up here so we're just going to read a little bit have to leave now guys bye and have fun have a good day Andy have a good day okay I'm just gonna start reading from the place where I've underlined the beginning part of it if you gotta go Jacob you gotta go after this one my dictionary is an absolute challenge. I need a better one. <laughs> duck, duck, go. Okay, again, from the chapter, which is the authoritarian ideology. Okay. From page 69. Quote. Narrow conservative life exercises a continuous influence, penetrates every facet of everyday life, whereas factory work and revolutionary leaflets have only a brief effect. Thus, it was a grave mistake to cater to conservative tendencies in the workers by giving banquets as a means of getting at the masses. Reactionary fascism was much more, which, which was much more expert at this. The budding revolutionary modes of life were not uh, cultivated there was more truth about the reactionary structure of the workers in the evening dress brought by the wife of a worker uh, for such a banquet bought by the wife of a worker for such a banquet than in a hundred articles the evening dress or at home beer parties were of course only external manifestations of a process in the worker a testimony of the fact that the groundwork for the reception of national socialist propaganda was already there. When added to this, the fascists uh, promised the aboli abolition of the proletariat and was successful with this promise. It was the evening dress and not the economic program that accounted for success in 90, 90 of 100 cases. We must pay more, much more attention to these details of everyday life. It is around these details that social progress or its opposition 
assume concrete form, not around the political slogans that arouse temporary enthusiasm only. There is important and fruitful work wait, waiting here. In Germany, the revolutionary work for the masses was restricted almost exclusively to propaganda against hunger. The basis of this propaganda, as important as it was, proved to be too narrow. There are thousands of different things taking place behind the scenes in the life of the individual of the masses. For instance, the young worker has a thousand sexual and cultural problems which plague him as soon as he has appeased his hunger to a small degree. The fight against hunger is of primary importance, but the hidden process of human life must also be placed under the fierce light of this monkey show in which we are spectator and actor at one and the same time. And this must be done without restraint and without fear of consequences. Okay. This quote, this information, what he's trying to say here is this. He was tackling this uh, before this came up, which is why specifically communist versus fascist there was a sort of a battle in the 1930s going on between communism and fascism which is one of the reasons why the third reich and was so against communist russia their biggest enemy was communism right like hitler didn't really want to wage war against uh the uk right they wanted to go towards russia and which the eastern front was where world war ii was decided right like 85 percent of the casualties of world war ii were on the eastern front much of that from russians like i forget what the numbers are but 50 million 30 to 50 million russians died on the eastern front and 80 percent 85 percent of the casualties of germany was on the eastern front not on the western front right so there's a whole build up here where wilhelm reich starts talking about how the communist the workers lost the battle to fascist and what he's referring to here is this that the communists had great slogans try to feed the hungry bring people out of poverty and all this stuff right but as soon as people were fed then they stepped away from the communist mentality from the workers mentality and started embracing the fascist mentality because the fascist mentality was giving them more than just trying to feed their hunger they were feeding their spirits their souls with some kind of nationalistic rhetoric some kind of belonging to a higher purpose than just trying to feed your hunger okay very powerful i never understood like when reading this that was one of the things uh, i'm starting to really get a appreciation for us how is it possible that fascism was able to get a foothold in europe and this book the mass psychology of fascism is giving me a pretty good idea of how that was that was loaded excerpt that was a loaded excerpt why was it in the sex economy chapter as a, am i missing something so page 69 was in which chapter was this in page 69 is in this chapter page 69 is in chapter 2 okay and chapter 2 is the authoritarian ideology of the family and the mass psychology of fascism and one thing he points out in this in this chapter is the structure of the family where the fascists were really pushing the the family structure the morality of the family and the hierarchy of the family with the male role model uh, sort of ruling over the family sort of dictatorial family structure right and he goes into the whole discussion of why it was that women really supported the rise of fascism because they associated the rise of fascism with uh, the family structure, okay, which was something that I really didn't 
understand previously. I have assumed page 69 was the sex economy chapter. No, the sex economy, sex economy appears all over the place in this. But da 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 anti-sexual race theory. Again, check this out. The there's a chapter starting from page 115, chapter six, which I'm halfway through, I guess, is is titled "Organized Mysticism as an International Anti-Sexual Organization." So let me read you what each chapter is. Okay, I must read this book. I think uh, I think I read one of his in school. Hey, little man, I think. Cool. So let me read you the chapter titles, okay? Chapter 1, Ideology as a Material Force. Chapter 2, The Authoritarian Ideology of the Family and the Mass Psychology of Fascism. Chapter 3, The Race Theory. Okay, and here, let me give you the beginning, which pages they start at. Chapter 1 starts at page 3. Chapter 2 starts at page 34. Chapter 3, Race Theory, starts at page 75. Chapter 4, The Symbolism of the Swastika, starts at page 98. Chapter 5, The Sex Economic Presupposition of the Authoritarian Family, starts at page 104. Chapter 6, Organized Mysticism, as an international anti-sexual organization starts at page 115 okay king Auxil king x lucky thank you for the twitch prime sub watch the upload when if it comes out it will come out hopefully at some point right and then he has sub headings here for some of the chapters as well and then the following chapters are chapter 7 is sex economy in the fight against mysticism chapter 8 is some questions of sex political practice chapter 9 is the masses in the state chapter 10 is biosocial function of work chapter 11 is give responsibility to vitality vitally necessary work chapter 12 the biologic miscalculation in the human struggle for freedom and chapter 13 on natural work democracy okay hannah how are you doing how's life hope you're doing well we're reading some powerful quotes should i read you the three quotes that i've already linked up on uh, our discord page and uh, and uh, I tweeted as well okay so let me read you this this is something I quoted uh, you find a quote on discord okay uh, and it's on uh, one more day till a long weekend happy fourth of happy Canada day for Canadians and Happy 4th of July tomorrow for you guys because we're July 3rd right now. So let me read you this. Uh, this one is from page 40 of my edition. Okay. You can hear all the glass being put away. Right. The recycling. So I'm just going to read it to you from the quote that I had on Discord. Okay. Actually, let me go to page 40. Let me go to page 40. See what I've highlighted here. Yeah, let me read you from here. And we're going to read from here. And we're going to go all the way. We're going to go all the way, all the way to there. Yeah, so let's read this. So it spans two pages, what I'm about to read you. Okay. My code I'm presenting. You want to change the world? Be a great dad. Crispy. Yeah, really. You want to change the world? Make sure 
generations that are coming up are taken care of they're very well educated fed protected share them the truth don't don't raise them in a bubble right so these are the couple of tags words that I've written up on top here okay and on the side uh, so these quotes are from this controlled propaganda movements middle class okay and this is from page 40 and 41 and the chapter is then again is from the authoritarian ideology okay and I'm just gonna read you this and this is related to the middle class uh, and the core base of fascism right the main title is this on the mass psychology of the lower middle class we have stated that Hitler's success is to be ascribed neither to his personality nor to the objective role his ideology played in capitalism nor for that matter is it to be ascribed to a mere befogging of the masses who followed him we put our finger on the core of the matter in italics what was going on in the masses that they followed a party whose leadership was objectively as well as subjectively in diametric opposition to the interests of the working masses and italics in answering this question we must first of all bear in mind that in its first successful onset the national socialist movement relied upon the broad layers of the so-called middle class i.e the millions of private and public officials middle class merchants and lower and middle class farmers from the point of view of its social basis national social socialism was a lower middle class movement and this was the case wherever it appeared whether in italy hungary argentina or norway hence this lower middle class which was formerly on the side of the various bour bour bourgeois democracies must have gone through an inner transformation causing it to change its political position the social situation and its corresponding psychological structure of the lower middle classes offer an explanation of the basic similarities as well as differences between the ideology of the liberal liberal bour bour bourgeoisie and the fascists okay I'm going to read you one more paragraph okay more than what I linked up in discord and shared on uh, Twitter mind and gap fash again quote fascism's lower middle class is the same as liberal democracy's lower middle class only in a different historical epoch of capitalism in the election between 1930 to 1932 national socialism pulled its new votes almost exclusively from the German National Party and the smaller faction parties of the German Reich. Only the Catholic Center, uh, Catholic Center maintained this opposition, even in the per Prussian election of 1932. It wasn't until the later election that National Socialism also conceded in making an, in making an incursion into the masses of individual workers. The middle class was and continued to be the mainstay of the swastika and it was this class championing the cause of national socialism which stepped onto the political tribu tribunal and halted the revolutionary reconstruction of society during the most severe economic con conv convol convulsion the capitalist system had experienced 1929 to 1932 political reactions assessment of the middle class is important was absolutely correct in a leaflet of the german national party of april april 8 1932 we read the middle class quoting this is quote from the german national party of 19 
of April 8, 1932 in a leaflet that they had, quote, the middle class is of decisive importance for the existence of the state. Okay. And in further on down past this, he starts talking about how the fascists basically brought in the Catholic Church into their fold and got the Catholic Church to support the fascist movement as well. Okay. Hello, Rendell. How are you doing? King Luxy. He was trying to catch a stream to give, give you the subscription just as a little thank you for helping me sleep many nights got to go now and have a great stream uh have have a fantastic way have a fantastic baking baking massive book collection okay book collection i'm gonna grow it i use emotion for the many and reserve reason for the few <laughs> adolf hitler martin quoting adolf hitler he said adolf adolf man missed that any streams this week hannah thank you for the cheers brother thank you for the cheers to three others in chat awesome let me read you another quote i had uh, i shared on discord and mind and gap and twitter okay this one is from page 51 let's go to page 51 a lot of these quotes that we're reading are from the authoritarian ideology that chapter right which is chapter two i believe yeah chapter two okay so this is from page 51 and i'm gonna start reading it from the economic i'm just gonna start reading it from there and we're gonna continue on to page 52 okay so let me read you this okay nightbird flying thank you very much for the twitch prime sub okay and what i have here again is what i've highlighted is fascism and there's a fair bit of highlights that's one of the reasons i shared i have put, i put even a little twitter here i wanted to share that on on discord twitter gap in mind right so from page 51 okay quote it is not only as a private owner of property that the small landowner is identified with the larger landowner by itself this would not mean very much what is important here is the preservation of the ideological atmosphere of the small and mid medium property owners that atmosphere namely that exists in small enterprises operated by family unit it is this atmosphere that is known to produce the best nationalistic fighters and to imbue the women with nationalistic fervor and this explains why political reaction is always prat prattling about the morality preserving influence of the peasantry however this is sex economic question this interlacing of individualistic modes of production and the authoritarian family in the lower middle class is one of the many sources of the fascist ideology of the large family this question will return this question will return later in another context the economic pitting of small businesses against one another corresponds to the family encapsulation and com competition typical of the lower middle class notwithstanding the fascist ideology common welfare ideology quote common welfare comes before personal welfare and quote co corporate idea okay and his quote that he's doing the basic back to reading from the book the basic elements of fascist ideology quote fewer principles end quote family policy etc have an individualistic characteristics what is collective collective in fascism 
stems from the sociologic tendencies in the mass basis and the individualistic element stem from the interests of big business and the fascist leadership. Let me read that again. What is collective in fascism stems from the socialistic tendencies in the mass basis as the individualistic elements stem from the interests of big business and the fascist leadership. In view of man's natural organization, this economic and family situation would break down if it were not secured by a specific relationship between man and woman, a relationship we designate a patriarchal and, and a mode of sexuality derived from the specific relationship. Economically, the urban middle class man is not in a better position than the manual laborer. Thus, in his efforts to determine, differentiate himself from the laborer, he must rely essentially on his family and sexual modes of life. His economic depriva dep deprivation have to be compensated for in a sexual moralistic way. In the case of the official, this motive is the most effective element of his identification with the ruling power. Since one is not on a plane with the upper middle class, but in a, but in a non, non, non this list ident identified with it, the sex moralistic ideologies have to compensate for the economic limitations. Essentially, the sexual modes of life and the cultural modes of life depend upon them serve to differentiate him from the lower classes okay and this is what i was referring to where the fascist leaders with the previous quotes that we were reading sort of trying to put it into context where the fascist leaders really emphasize the moralistic nature of their rule and try to bring the middle class into the fold of fascism by saying that they are superior to the working class to the laborer because of their moralistic beliefs not because of their economic standing and that's really the push that solidified the ruling fascist and if we want to put this into context of present day what we are seeing here in southern and central usa with certain states basically banning abortion and wilhelm reich talks about abortion being a, one of the central focus of the fascist ideology taking power away from women into their own reproductive cycle by giving that control over to the patriarchy and when i read this this was sort of unfolding with the laws with making abortion illegal in certain states really sunk in like really made me understand why that was taking place very powerful very powerful blessings dr p welcome to an intense live stream okay let me read you another quote that i've already shared on discord and uh and and this is from page 111 okay and you can read mass psychology of fascism here let me uh, give you the links to this to chat okay and I'm just gonna give you guys the link here this will take you to page 111 of the book that I'm reading but you can scroll to the beginning if you want to read it online okay so this is page 111 uh, da, 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 let's go to page 111 and i'll tell you what chapter this is from as well okay this is from the sex economic uh presuppositions so this is from chapter da, da, da. this is uh chapter five the sex economic presuppositions of the authoritarian family okay and 
the quote that I have here, where am I reading from? I'm reading from here, but I'm going to read you a little bit more than what I linked up on Discord and uh, and uh, and uh, and mind and gap. Okay. And the words I have here is for my own self is uh, sex, love, fear, tradition, sex, woman, freedom. And wow, <laughs> for myself, <laughs> right? Going, some of the stuff is blowing me away. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to read you, uh, I'm going to start the reading uh, past the place where he was sort of quoting a uh, made up letter that a woman might have written. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's check this out. Oh, my battery is dying on my recorder. So let's read this, the voice recorder. And uh, I might have to run. I should have grabbed more batteries to do this, but it is what it is, right? So let's do this. So from page 111, quote, This letter clearly reflects the conflict with which the average person is faced. Italics for the next sentence, long sentence. Quote again. He is made to believe that he must choose between compulsive sexual moral morality on the one hand and sexual anarchy on the other hand. The average person has no knowledge of the sex economic regulation of sexuality which is as far from compulsive morality as it is from anarchy. Ending the italics, quoting again, or reading again. He reacts to, to the imposed severe uh, compulsion with promiscuous impulses. He defends himself against both. Morality is a burden, and inter, uh, instinct appears as a tremendous danger. The man reared upon and bound by authority has no knowledge of the natural law of self-regulation. He has no confidence in himself. He is afraid of his sexuality because he never learned to live it naturally. Thus, he declines all responsibility for his acts and decisions, and he demands direction and guidance. I'm just going to end the quote for now. We'll continue with that this sentence here i found to be extremely powerful so i'm just going to read that again okay the man reared under the bound by authority has no knowledge of the natural law of self-regulation he has no confidence in himself he is afraid of his sexuality because he never learned to live it naturally thus he declines all responsibility for his acts and decisions, and he demands direction and guidance. Continuing reading. The revolutionary movement has not yet had any success with the sexual policies gauged against the success that consist revolutionary sexual politics could have achieved because it failed to react with appropriate weapons against political reactions, successful attempt to exploit man's suppressed sexual powers. If sexual reaction had publicized only as political thesis on population, it would not have poked a single cat from under the bed, but it exploited the sexual anxiety in women and girls, and to this it owes its success. It was skill, skillful in linking its population aims with the compulsive moralistic inhibitions of the people at all levels of society as a matter of fact. The hundreds of thousands of organized Christian workers are proof of this. End quote. Okay. Those were last three quotes or the three that I shared previously. Martin is quoting something. 
Genghis Khan, there is no value in anything until it is finished. There is no value in anything until it is finished. I don't know if I'd agree with that. <laughs> Personally. Okay. What else should we read, gang? What else should we read? I still have battery life left. One bar in this room in this in my recorder so until this finishes um, we'll read one more what page should we go to you guys decide you guys decide I'm gonna have a spoonful of crab apple jam and we've we have a whole series of videos of how to make crab apple jelly right crab apple jam crab butter crab apple butter right super delicious super tangy oof, oof, oof. Martin I throw in another random page 119 let's do dr. Duros 101 welcome to a stream uh, page 119 that's page 119 and this is from the chapter organized mysticism as an international anti-sexual organization what a title what a title I'll try doctor when I'm reading the quotes I'm sort of reading a little bit louder I think okay and this is chapter 6 so chapter 6 reading a quote chapter 6 Organized mysticism as an international anti-sexual organization. Okay. Page 119. What do we got? We got. We got highlighted. And Holly 20. Welcome to a stream. And what I have. The recycling truck is moving its way again. The words I've tagged this page by with are marriage, sexuality, fascism, Christianity, use God, religion. Okay. So I'm going to read you this paragraph. Let me see. He's got some quotes from other people here as well. Uh, mythos. And some of these quotes are from some of the uh, fascist leaders. He's, he does have quotes here from uh, what a cheeky recycling truck. What a cheeky recycling truck. Keeps on coming back. Keeps on coming back. <laughs> okay, I'm going to wait it until it moves on a little bit more. Okay. Cool. Okay, let's read this. It's just one paragraph of highlighted. Okay. Quote We have already seen how the ideology of national honor derives from authoritarian ideology and the latter from the sex negating regulation of sexuality. Neither Christianity nor national socialism attacks the institution of compulsive marriage. For the former, apart from its function of procreation marriage is a complete lifelong union for the national socialist it is a biologically rooted institution for the preservation of racial purity outside of, outside of compulsive marriage there is no sexuality for either of them furthermore national socialism does not want to maintain religion or a historical basis but on a topical basis this change is to be explained in terms of the disintegration of christian sexual morality which can no longer be upheld solely on the basis of historical demands okay and he's got a quote here from ludwig uh, Haas. let me read you this quote from ludwig Haas from uh National Socialization, like, I don't know what this is, from page 213. Okay, quote, quoting someone else, right? The ethical racial state must one day still discover 
as deepest roots in religion. Not until our, our belief in God ceases to be related to a specific event in the past, but is again and again through uh, everlasting experience intricately interwoven with the native activity and life of a people and a state as well as the individual will our will our world be firmly re-established okay fresh kiwi thank you for the twitch prime subscribe i just got two ads from twitch even though i have twitch prime no wonder ad blocks are a thing no wonder ad blocks are a thing i didn't realize you guys are getting ads during these live streams sensei guide me through the metaphoric dojo please a uh, doctor um, basically the quote here it's part of a larger thesis that he's Wilhelm Reich is sharing with mass psychology of fascism what he wrote where he's basically stating there's an economic element to all political movements but he's also stating that there's a sexual element to the rise of fascism to almost not all political movement but very uh, very much related to the authoritarian movement which is a fascist movement which fascist movements are right there are other forms of authoritarian movements but fascist movement is one of the principal forms of the authoritarian movement right and his thesis his one of his main arguments Wilhelm Reich's argument is that by controlling sexuality of the masses by introducing morality to the life of people fascist movements are able to dictate the direction that a society starts moving towards right and the rise of fascism he's linking up directly with the control of sexuality with the introduction of morality or a specific type of morality which is the authoritarian morality into our society right twitch prime is no longer ad free really you need to get twitch turbo for that now oh wow i didn't know that may i ask you if william is related to the third right he this book william reich okay he was present in Europe during the rise of the Third Reich. Okay, he escaped, came to the United States. The Third Reich burned Wilhelm Reich's books. Okay, Nazi Germany burned Wilhelm Reich's books. When Wilhelm Reich came to the United States in the 1960s, 1970s, 1960s or 1970s, the United States also burned his books and they put him in jail okay and he died of a heart attack a week before he was going to be released from jail right so as far as I know Wilhelm Reich is the only person that both Nazi Germany and the United States government have burned his books a must read okay Arthane, how are you doing? Just tuning in. Did you get turned on to Wilhelm through Robert Anton Wilson? Yes, I did through this book. Okay. Robert Anton Wilson, Wilhelm Reich in Hell. And this is a sort of a play, sort of a musical. And the video is available online. It's a very short book, brilliant book. It's very much related to the murder of Christ. Okay. That uh, Wilhelm Reich basically. Um, uh, talked about right and other people have talked about right which is um, and I got turned on to Wilhelm Reich also through um, understanding of weather control because once you go into the realm of because there is weather control 100% most people should know this by now okay uh, that weather control is something that nations participate in incorporation that's what geoengineering is all about right so weather manipulation let's call it weather manipulation right also through organ energy as well as sexuality one of the first places that 
I got introduced to Wilhelm Reich was exploring sexuality. And I don't know if that corresponded with me reading Wilhelm Reich's uh, Wilhelm Reich and Hell. I believe I, I was introduced to Wilhelm Reich before, well, for sure, I, was, I got introduced to Wilhelm Reich before I read this book, okay? Uh, mainly through, um, I believe, just the sexual, sexuality and morality and stuff like this, and weather manipulation, okay? He left America in 1939. He left for America in 1939, okay, cool. Thanks, Martin. I wasn't sure about the timing of that. Uh, of course they did that, thanks, Twitch. Heart attack. Can you please expand on the conspiracy behind his death? Uh, basically, um, one of Wilhelm Reich's co-workers was shipping instruments across, instruments or books, I, keep, I looked into this a long time ago, across state lines. Uh, it was, it was, he has, Wilhelm Reich has this philosophy and I, I you know, I've, other than the superficial level, I haven't looked into it. He says there's this energy that exists that we can use to heal ourselves and uh, evolve and stuff like this. And there's certain proofs of this in physics and science, and other people have stated this as well. But Wilhelm Reich was promoting this thing, this thing as a health benefit. And one of his co-workers shipped some instruments across state lines, and the United States government came after him. And they said, Wilhelm Reich was saying that this was would heal you, would prevent cancer and stuff like this, or help you fight cancer. And because he wasn't under the medical umbrella, the state said, you can't say those things. They took him to court. Wilhelm Reich made a mistake. He represented himself. He thought logic would save him from the state, from the centralized state, right? He should have got a lawyer to present his case. He presented himself, he represented himself. The judge said, go to jail. And they sent him to jail and they went to the warehouse, grabbed his books, whatever he was producing under that umbrella, and they took it to a place and burned them, right? So they burned his books, insane. Put him in jail and a week before he was supposed to be released, I forget how long he spent in jail, a week before he was supposed to be released, he died of a heart attack, okay? You can look into that further. Um, Wilhelm Reich is someone that you should know about, doctor. Okay. Wilhelm Reich is someone you should know about. And Holy is asking me if I have any pets. We used to have a cat. He died last year. He was a very, very good cat. Have you been called? <laughs> it was days before he would have uh, applied for parole, not necessarily would have been released. Is it days before he would have applied for parole? Okay, thank you for the correction. Uh, Sci Master 54 thank you for that, appreciate it. And again, please look up uh, anything that I say. Don't take everything that I say as absolute because I get my dates mixed up, I get my names mixed up, and my events sometimes mixed up, right? Currently, now that you, you're talking about uh, learning books, you remind me of Fahrenheit 4, 421 or 420. Why should I know about Wilhelm Reich? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if there's anyone that you should know about, would be someone who has written books, scientific books, philosophy books, uh, psychological books, societal books, okay social books okay uh, that both Nazi Germany and the US government have burned their books if any state comes across comes around and burns books of scientists irrelevant of what they're sharing then those are people that are worth looking into okay especially people that both Nazi Germany and the US government have burned their books okay it's something called the Streisand effect. If centralized power is trying to suppress information, it is our duty to find out what that information is. He spent five years in Norway. Cool. I have a cat too. His name is Reggie. <laughs> Reggie. Our cat was called Kron. Our cat was called Kron. Fun. What is your stance on religion, Sensei? Uh, you can stop calling me Sansei. I don't like titles. I am Chicho. 
Okay. As far as religion goes, I'm a spiritual being, but I do not believe in centralized religion. Burning books. Sorry. Fahrenheit 451. Yes, by Ray Bradbury. Does it ring anything? Yes, it does. And the movie was good too. Fahrenheit 451. Very good book. What else should we read? Should we go to page 125? Here. Let me let me read you. I like your beard. Thank you. Uh, let me read you the last thing that I've highlighted so far. How far I've gotten to. Okay. And this is from Organized Mysticism, since the question of religion has come up. And this is chapter six, I believe. Chapter six organized mysticism as an international anti-sexual organization okay so let me read you this hi chicho i've been a quite quiet lurker till now but i had to tell you i found a solution for the 10 by 10 math game how so appropriately share with you brother take a pic of it put it on discord okay uh under math i believe under math it might be a game section there too so if you want post it there or post a pic of it on Twitter or gab or minds and I'll retweet it okay or re gap it remind it on what they're called that would be an awesome way to share it and then later on at some point I'm gonna start doing a lot of those solutions just quietly with a reading in the background congrats on finding a solution I still haven't you got it so excited oh me too me too chicho why does wilhelm reich seem to care so much about sex seems a bit immature if you ask me a doctor tell you the truth we should all care about sex because the majority of society's ills are related to sexual repression all analysis almost every single major work related to the psyche of a society tackles sexuality okay Freud Freud I pronounce his name incorrectly Freud his main thesis was this <laughs> I think society is sexually repressed he spent eight months in prison as far as I can tell he kept appealing against his two-year sentence but finally lost yeah horrendous okay reading from organized mysticism page 24 and 25 i'm going to read you one paragraph okay the last paragraph i've gotten to and the tag phrases i have here is centralization education state it was not enough to point out that the authoritarian state was in control of and could exploit the parental home the church and the school as a means of binding the youth to a system and its world world of ideas the state used its entire power apparatus to keep these institutions intact hence nothing short of social revolution would have been capable of abol abolishing them and yet an undermining of their reactionary influence was one of the most essential preconditions of the social revolution and therefore the presupposition of their ab ab abolition many communists considered this the main task of the red cultural front to accomplish this task it was of decisive importance to comprehend the ways and means with the help of which the authoritarian parental home the school and the church could uh, exercise so much influence and to discover the process that took hold of the youth as a result of these influences generalization such as enslavement or brutalization did not offer an adequate explanation brutalization and enslavement were the results what we wanted to know were the processes that enabled dictatorial interest to gain a foothold in the culture of the masses okay and that's as far as I've gotten in this reading up to page 125 um, so what we'll do we'll end the reading of excerpts there because 
the battery on my recorder is dying off and I want to end the recording segment of it we'll continue on with the live stream where I'll keep on talking with the chat and stuff like this and if you guys want during the live stream to read anymore let me know but for the recording section we'll leave that there and I'll just mention this okay education is a huge part of what's going on in our societies presently and what has taken place historically Wilhelm Reich addresses it here when centralized power controls the parental home the church and the schools then they can do anything they want to a society which is one of the most important things we have to keep in mind in regards to centralization and the power of decentralization okay centralization gives power to a central entity that can direct society down roads pathways which could be extremely dark by controlling the parental home the church and the schools right when we decentralize those institutions we take away power from centralized institutions right it gives power back to us okay so as far as I'm concerned it's a three-pronged attack from you know that we have to consider as far as I'm concerned I'm attacking it from the realm of education decentralizing trying to decentralize our education system which is basically the main thesis of the body of work that I'm producing here okay aside from that I hope you enjoyed these excerpts from Wilhelm Reich's mass psychology of fascism and the odds are we'll do more okay thanks for being here and uh, thank you for the support for all of you who are supporting me through patreon through direct donations through liking through sharing through all the means listed in the description of this video and thank you for watching and participating and and uh, and being here okay aside from that I'll see you guys in the next video and I'm gonna go to chat and catch up on some of the comments bye for now